welcome everybody so this is my 14th speech so where uh, about uh, surface water management red clear canal system for surface water management respected leaders senior citizens and dear friends and dr shivu pediatrician from mysore karnataka state india my phone numbers are Plus nine one nine double four eight four double seven three eight zero. Plus nine one seven eight nine two five zero one eight nine one. My mail is shivup dot one eight three at gmail dot com. Visit www dot slide share dot net bar Dr. Shivu for my articles on our life on this world and on environment. This is my fourteen published speech. in this we will talk about the water life liquid for the entire flora and fauna now the time has come to think about better surface water management to save the life that is the entire flora and fauna which was not the need when the population on, on this earth consumed more than 2 lakh years to reach 1 billion number but now the same 1 billion population is adding into this earth in just 12 years with this you can imagine the increase in the demand on air water food especially by the humans as most of the other animal populations are not increasing like humans by natural methods and as their lifestyle is more nature friendly water a life liquid needed for all the living organisms without which the life on the li- of the living ends soon so we all need water then let us ask some questions ourselves on water question number 1 do you want water the answer is no controversies for this answer question number 2 is all are getting sufficient water the answer is no no controversies for this answer question number 3 do you want to get a permanent solution for this water scarcity the answer is yes no controversies for this answer question number 4 do you want to interlink the rivers to solve the problems of water scarcity the answer is yes and no many controversies for this answer question number 5 why controversies arose for interlinking rivers the answer many plans many views with imbalance in the advantages and disadvantages the thoughts comes to the mind as we think about interlinking rivers are it is nature destruction changes to the bioflora backwater forest land involved huge creation cost cities that are going to immerse cutting the hills and mountains underground canals big structures like dams and reservoirs elevations and depressions in the land very depressed land between himalaya and aravalli in the range of no mountains turbulence of water flow thinking about the interlinking rivers at the lower land level after the water body becomes huge see let us see see this is uh, the globe and uh, this is india so so many times we think uh, this is our national capital new delhi and this is the area see when we come to this place This is uh, we get an higher place. It's an higher place, so eight hundred thousand, thousand two hundred like that. It increases, and here is the depressed land, the most depressed land, and maximum height. Uh, what we get here in this place in the west of Delhi, okay, in uh, Haryana. It's only about two uh, twenty meters. Okay, not more than that. 
so so many a times so this is the jaipur say for example if you want to shift the water from this point to this point okay it's about uh, 300 uh, kilometers and uh, say for example here we bring the water to 800 meters above the means 11 that's uh, we, we can discuss that in later how the water comes uh, here the ganga river water and yamuna river water to this place at uh, to the level of 800 meters above the level means 11 and when we come to this place this is the arvalli range of hills so we can bring it to 700 meters so that means here is the 800 meters here is the 700 meters there is a gradient of 100 meters but uh, the land the maximum height we are going to get at this point is about 200 to 220 meters above the mean sea level that means if this is the case we cannot create an open canal so we have to think of a closed canal a youtube canal so in this place so maybe um, um, till date no one of us might have thought like that that's why and the second thing uh, so that's why um, uh, maybe the people are thinking it's not possible to bring water from himalayan range of hills to the south india and second thing is see when we are uh, planning uh, interlinking rivers uh, many a times we plan at this junction so say for example maybe a mahanadi okay so we go the very krishna river okay so see when uh, when we are uh, planning to interlink at this point the water volume is already very high and the area say for example if you are connecting from this point to this point the area which is available is very small so so these are some of the things made made the people to think that um, uh, so it's not useful that's why there are controversies so now let us think on a new method which is devoid of all these issues that is reticular canal system reticular canal system which no one knows at present it is which is which protects the nature by preventing deforestation and desertification protecting the bioflora by providing the home through reforestation and uh, relakeification no or minimal backwater problem the less forest land involved in creation of the system and it facilitates reforestation less creation cost no cities are going to immerse no cutting of hills and mountains as it is a simple surface canal no or very less underground canals no big structures like dams and reservoirs overcoming the elevations and depressions in the land by understanding the earth surface well and through simple structures like canal elevators by dams aqueducts direct to canal connectors shift of the water across the very depressed land between himalaya and aravalli vindhya mountains can be managed with safe structures like youtube canals handling the water at the higher level at multiple points instead of handling at the lower level where the water must becomes huge and turbulent thinking about the interlinking rivers at the higher level when the water body is small but at multiple points is the key so so just now we have discussed so this is the most depressed part so from here to here 
Jaipur uh, that is from Himalayan range to by creating YouTubes say for example uh, say instead of interlinking at this point where the water mass becomes very huge from here to here that is from um, Mahanadi to Godavari we will be interlinking the rivers at the higher level so so maybe at the level of 500 meters above the mean sea level we will be interlinking say for example this is the FPC so what we can do is maybe if this is 500 meters so we can create a canal ok and uh, that canal comes this way and um, we will be interlinking canals at 500 meters above the mean sea level like this so that means we are going to get uh, irrigation for a lot of lands instead of small strip of lands if we think uh, if we think to interlink these uh, canals at a higher level so reticular canal system is a better alternative more suitable and efficient method to manage surface water presently what we call it as interlinking rivers surface water management presently what we call it as interlinking rivers example Ganga Kaveri interlinking is the subject reticular canal system is the method for better surface water management and for interlinking rivers that we need to understand completely for our survival before telling yes or no to it eradication of drought will also eliminate the poverty to the maximum extent especially in our nation where the maximum people depend on rain for their livelihood that is for agriculture drought leading to poverty acting as the obstacle in the process of national progress is the topic of discussion and it is the national emergency that we need to address and the answer to this national emergency is present in reticular canal system for surface water management or interlinking Indian rivers for better use and effective management of available surface water that I need to propagate for which I seek the help of all of you the thoughts comes at, at this point is why we need to interlink or manage surface water how we can interlink or manage surface water what are the uses of better management of surface water let us see some scenarios in the present irrigation system like number one reservoirs are full sometimes see look at this this is the Kaveri river basin and Krishna river basin we can see so Harangi reservoir the maximum level is 2859 feet and uh, as of June 2009 it was 2803.12 feet Hemavati Reservoir 2922 was the maximum level and 2867.17 was the level on uh, June 2009 Krishna Raja Sagar the maximum level is uh, 124.8 feet and uh, the level on June 2009 was 72.22 feet Kabini Reservoir the maximum level was 2284 feet and uh, as of June 2009 the level was 2264.58 feet this is this was in Kaveri basin when you look into the Krishna basin the Badra reservoir the maximum level was 2158 feet and as of June 2009 it was 2102 
field. Tungabhadra Reservoir, the maximum level was 1633 and uh, it was 1588 on uh, June 2009. Gataprabha, the maximum level was 2975. It was 2067 field on uh, June 2009. Malaprabha, the maximum level is 2079 feet and uh, in June 2009 it was uh, 2035 feet. Almaty Dam, the maximum level 1615 feet and it was 1595 in June 2009. So that means in June 2009 most of the reservoirs in Kaveri River Basin and uh, Krishna River Basin were full or near full. So let us look into another scenarios. The reservoirs are somewhat filled but not to the extent of releasing the water. See here you can see these are the crest gates and uh, there is uh, dead space water is there and this water will, will not be able to move to these gates ok so this was uh, in um, 286 2009 so when we look into another type of scenarios the reservoirs are empty for many months in a year so see, here we can see the water in TMC feet at uh, the maximum draw down level and the gross storage capacity in TMC feet uh, is given in brackets in the reservoir as on uh, Tuesday in the month of July 2009. So what was the level? See what is this? This is in June. Almost this is in uh, July 2009. Okay, so the Harangi maximum storage capacity is 8.5 TMC, but in uh, July 2009 it was uh, only 0.737. Amavati the maximum storage capacity is 37.1 TMC in uh, July 2009 it, it was only 1.313 TMC Krishna Raja Sagara the maximum storage capacity is 49.45 TMC and uh, uh, the storage was only 0 Kadini the maximum storage capacity is 19.51 but the storage was only 0 TMC in um, July 2009. These are uh, Kaveri River Basin uh, reservoirs. Then we come to Krishna River Basin rivers that is uh, Badra. The maximum storage capacity is 71.53 TMC but it was only 7.47 in July 2009. Tungabhadra Reservoir the maximum storage capacity 104.34 that it was only 2.493. Gataprabha the maximum storage capacity 51 TMC but it was 0 at that time. Malaprabha 37.73 TMC is the maximum storage capacity but zero in uh, July 2009. Almaty the maximum storage capacity is 123.081 TMC but it was zero at uh, June, July 2009. Narayanapura Dam the maximum storage capacity was 33.3 31 TMC but it was only 4.105 TMC in July 2009. 
So, so just now we have gone through three types of scenarios where the reservoirs are full, where the reservoirs are somewhat full but uh, will not be able to release water and sometimes the reservoirs are dry. See the, what, what lessons we are going to learn. The lessons we learned from these previous scenarios are all the water which generates in one river basin cannot be stored with any number of reservoirs. Thus, we need to leave the water to the sea which exceeds the capacity of the reservoirs and the people will not have any benefit out of the water which reaches the sea. That is the excess water. On the other hand, many reservoirs will remain empty waiting for long time for the rain to occur in its catchment area or for the release of water stored at uh, another reservoir is at a higher level in the same river basin even if the water which is present in the reservoir is insufficient to provide irrigation to the land depending on that reservoir that is less water less scenarios water will not come and fill the reservoir in a fraction of seconds so sometimes there are exceptions like uh, glacial outbreak floods Rain is not going to happen like a flash. The raining is a process, it takes its own time and thus the flow of water in its path. This is the process of raining. Whatever number of reservoir systems we have today with their maximum capacity is not sufficient for the present population. That's why disputes are present and the tribunals to keep these disputes for decades exist. This is because of the storage problem. The problems and solutions related to water. Number one, the scarcity of water is the common problem we hear in uh, everywhere, everyday life for many reasons, maybe related to drinking, domestic, agriculture, industrial purposes and so on. RCS will supply water to all the possible places from the higher level before the water reaches the lower level by assessing the water generation and the flow not only to the reservoirs of the same river basin but also from and to to all the river basins do the same thing when there is good rain in the other river basin so the RCS has the ability to distribute water the excess water from the excess water to uh, the place where the water is deficient. RCS distributes water to all the rivers, lakes, ponds, reservoirs and to all the places wherever we want and whenever we want. When there is rain at any place which is higher to the place of RCS canal or place of storage. The recent development is most of the bore wells are empty because we started extracting the borewell water more than its replenishment. RCS gives solution for it. We are forced to use borewell water even if its chemical quality is not good. RCS will be able to provide quality portable surface water to all. That is, RCS will supply the surface water in adequate quantity with good quality that we can use as per our demand, the underground water level will increase everywhere. Fluorosis. Nothing of this sort will happen with RCS because all the people will get river surface water for drinking purpose. We need not use the borewell waters for any purpose with the complete establishment of RCS. Surface water is the safe water with respect to the chemical composition of water is concerned unless it is contaminated or polluted by the human activity. So here we can see a child suffering with uh, she is Lakshmi, a 12 year old uh, so classic symptoms of fluorosis that is we can see twisted hands and feet delayed swelling. With RCS, the people can sow the seed at the ideal time and they need not wait for the rain to occur. Situation like struggling to get the water for domestic use will not occur due to scarcity of water. 
excluding the problems associated with the water supply system with the establishment of RCS. Population overgrowth in a smaller area of land away from the source of water or when the demand is more than the supply done by the nature, it can cause for all water related problems. With the establishment of RCS, there will not be any scarcity of water for any reasons. With RCS, people need not protest for water for domestic purpose. RCS gives solution for all. So, the need for doing protest for water will not arise with the establishment of RCS. People looking at the sky for rain and becoming old will not happen. So, finally, people try farming with the water in buckets. Farmers need not carry water in buckets to do agriculture and struggle to get the yield. This will never happen in agriculture with RCS. Scarcity of electricity. With RCS, adequate amount of power can be generated and can be supplied to all the parts of the nation through nationwide grids. These electricity generation stations can be created along the courses of RCS at all the possible places where we get optimum height of falls of water from primary canal or flat primary canal to secondary canal in thousands of numbers with better capacity to produce the electricity. To solve all the problems related to water, we need to create the irrigation system in such a way which is simple in creation, number one, number two, surface in situation so that water is available for use all along the course, number three, safe even if it breaks down. Imagine the difference between breaking the tank on one side and the pipe on the other side. Number four, secure even in the absence of monitoring. Number five, synergistic to the present irrigation system. Number six, saves money in creation and maintenance, still irrigates larger surface. Number seven, sustainable in long run in the service of irrigating the land. Number eight, sufficient in volume TMC, thus say no to disputes. RCS, a best surface water management system, will act like a, a bridge in a reticular fashion between flood and drought prone areas, giving justice to both. So here, then um, dark blue areas, the flood prone areas, and um, the brown areas are drought prone areas. So RCS will uh, act like a bridge giving justice to both flood prone areas and to the drought prone areas. Scarcity of water and its effects. Scarcity of water causes decreased carbon dioxide uptake by the trees and plants, increases the atmospheric temperature, global warming and climate changes. Changes in the atmospheric temperature also causes disturbances in the process of pollination, growth of the plants and the yield. This leads to decrease in the agricultural production, decreased personal and family economy, decreased nutritional intake and poverty. Insufficient water, poor quality of water in terms of chemical microbiological parameters leads to increased incidence of diseases, work absenteeism, hospitalization, decreased productivity and increase in the expenditure and uh, again decreased nutritional intake and poverty. So uh, the effects of drought, the effects of drought on poverty are on poor. Decreased intake of nutrition, smaller average built, 
decreased working capacity, decreased quality of life, act like the reservoir of diseases, increased burden on cheaper hospital like government and charitable hospitals, becoming less competitive in the present competitive world and remains as poor in the next generation also, expects favors from the government or unable to live a life in the absence of support from the government. If the nation has a greater number of poor, then the nation becomes poor. The effects of drought and rich. Less customers for the products generated by the rich, quarrels with the rich while paying the bill, makes the rich to generate a poor quality items to fulfill the requirement of the poor leading to more pol pollution with short lifespan of the products. The rich cannot expect more from the poor in many types of services, example health services. The rich need to confine himself in the place where only rich lives. Effects of drought on nation. Less generation of money through the taxation, poor public infrastructure, poor, poor salary and benefits for the employees for both government and non-government employees, increased tendency to indulge in corruption to fulfill the gap by the employees, increase in the incidence of crime. So there is a relation between irrigation and the overall national development. Effects of drought on globe are on the environment. There is a decreased growth of the vegetation, decreased survival of the animals, increased carbon dioxide retention in the environment, global warming, climate changes. Let us look in the relation between the people living with poverty at a drought prone area and their impact on the environment and the nation. It is very much essential to eradicate drought and poverty to save our planet. Drought is the important cause for the genesis of poverty. Scarcity of water that is drought, power, population and poverty relation. Increase in the population without increase in the personal economy of the every individual will increase the incidence and the prevalence of people living with poverty. It is very much essential to eradicate poverty to save our planet. In this aspect I have mentioned few points relating the drought and the poverty with the environment. Poverty makes the people to depend on the products which are cheap, thus they may be of the low quality with the short lifespan, thus leads to increased waste generation and its impact on the environment. Poverty makes the people to depend on the low cost transportation vehicle, thus these vehicles will emit more emission into the nature leading to pollution. Poverty makes the people to depend on free, cheap, charitable hospitals where these organizations face more demand than the supply. Thus, these organizations may make the people to become symptomatically better but may make them chronic carriers or a morbid person with the brand of no disease. Example, dispensing the medicine for two to three days in the place of five to seven days course may lead to drug resistant strains and later these microbes in the partially treated person may infect the other people. Thus this institution will indirectly keep the disease alive and make the disease to spread to many. These organizations may have to distribute the limited materials or drugs that they receive till the end of the month or the year to make all the people happy. Poverty makes the people to live in unhygienic atmosphere, poor sanitary facility and open air defecation so on. 
all these will lead to surface water contamination and uh, root cause for many diseases to both poor and rich. Poverty makes the people to live in poor, overcrowded houses and make uh, the environment suitable for the spread of communicable diseases. Poverty makes the people to have poor food, that is food combinations with poor nutrition, leading to poor built, low blood proteins and immunoglobulins, thus the malnutrition related disease and, and acting like a reservoir for diseases apart from the multiple sufferings. Poverty makes the people to depend on poor quality school or their profession making them to live away from the school leads to late to start in education for their children and uh, less gain of knowledge and more dependency. Poverty makes the people to compare their life with the life of the rich. With this respect some strong poor man looking at the lifestyle of the rich thus he wants to become rich in so short span and indulging him in crime to get the money thinking that he can lead a better life in the future is injurious to both. Thus, that is the person indulging in crime and to the rich. Poverty makes the poor farmer to spray the insecticides any number of times to save their crop. Thus makes the food poisonous and also the land pollution. Poverty makes the farmers to sell their products in an unhygienic way where many foodborne diseases will add to the food on the way to its final consumption. Poverty makes the people not to earn more wealth. A man who works all the 24 hours in a day for any number of years with sincerity and compassion for his profession need not become rich any time in, in his lifetime. And this mechanism is complex and common sense will make us understand how it is happening. This leads to poor per capita income, poor nutrition, poor lifestyle, poor build, poor work capacity at the individual level and a poor tax collection, poor national economy, poor investment on education health infrastructure at the national level. Poor education, health, infrastructure will lead to increase in the individual expense and environmental deterioration. Example, poor road leads to less mileage, more expense and increased emission. Nation with the people of poverty with less built, less knowledge, more diseases makes the nation to import essential materials, equipments and medicines in large quantity for higher price and it may be unaffordable for the common person or the common person has to get it by investing his lifetime earnings thus the person remains poor and thus the nation remains poor. Drought is the root cause and the effect is the poverty. Eradicating drought and poverty is the need to save the mother earth for our younger generation. Otherwise, we will land up in grave problems related to environmental issues like deforestation, desertification, diseases related to poor chemical and microbiological quality of the water, poor air quality, harmful rays entering the atmosphere due to high emission rate, global warming, climate changes and so on. With this talk, we have learned few things about how scarcity of water due to poor surface water management. With this increase in population is causing drought, poverty and its subsequent consequences on our day to day life. There was a time where the population on this earth took more than 2 lakh years to reach 1 billion number. Now the same 1 billion population is adding to this earth in less than 12 years and the need for the air, water, food for this explosively expanded population is also increasing proportionately. We need water to get oxygen through the trees. 
we need water to water for our drinking and domestic purposes and we need water for growing food for eating and this list grows if we need water for animals for milk and meat construction manufacturing materials we use in our day to day life and so on we also know there is no scarcity of water on this earth but the scarcity of water is present at many places where we live because of this water scarcity not only for the humans but for the entire flora and fauna are suffering including the land scarcity of water in the land is making the land to get converted into deserts thus managing surface water effectively efficiently needfully quantitatively qualitatively timely considering and keeping all the side effects of artificial irrigation system and identifying the most suitable method to utilize the available surface water is the need of the whole to save this earth and to save the entire flora and fauna on this earth i have a great confidence that method reticular canal system will give the solution for all the irrigation related issues on this earth thank you for listening to my 14th speech i think you got an idea on how scarcity of water due to poor surface water management causes drought poverty and its subsequent consequences on our day to day life in my next speech i wanted to make an appeal to all the leaders of this world to consider my thoughts on our environment which i have delivered through my published speeches to say this world intact and the leaders to do the needful for the same i will be requesting all the leaders of this world to consider my views through my next speech by the name letter to the leaders of this world if you like this then uh, you please subscribe my channel and share with your friends relatives and family members till it reaches all the leaders of this world to take necessary measures so that this world remains as it is for n number of years thanks once again